so that we can share our knowledge share our experience and uh, become a well-informed community. Uh, this uh, program is actually a co-joint organized kind of uh, by PRK, PP, PERA, and also FIT Unit Enterprise. So, uh, the idea is basically, again, as I said, to be a well-informed community. Uh, so we are among uh, each other to actually... So, uh, tonight, I'll be talking about something new, uh, which is actually uh, the problem with our thoughts and the problem with our mind. Uh, as you know, that quite a number of times we have problems. Uh, while doing things, our mind are actually quite uh, filled up with many other distractions. Uh, our thoughts and our mind is always there. So let me just put up the slide so that we can appreciate what we are talking about. And subsequently, we'll go for again for discussion and for more clarification if there is need. So, yeah. So, here I would like to share my slides. Uh, okay, I have muted everybody uh, because I think Murti, you have to use earphone, you're too noisy. Uh, so, I muted everybody and I'm going to mute myself as well. Uh, okay, thank you. sure. Okay, I'm not too sure why I wasn't able to share my slide. Host disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, you have to become a co-host. Okay, okay. Uh, Prof, uh, go, for, go for it. Okay, sure. All right, this is the slide for today. We are talking about this. So just uh, have a look at this phrase. Just try to understand what it is. They say that the mind is like water. When it's turbulent, it's difficult to see. But when it's calm, everything becomes clear. It's a very important uh, phrase for us to ponder. And I believe it is very true. Uh, it's only when the, the, you know, the storms uh, withered, so only then we can see the clear picture of the whole lot of the situation. So this is what we call our thoughts and our mind are always been, how should I say, busy? Or in a way, if it is just good, then it's okay. But if it is not, we call it cluttered. Too many things to think about, too many things could be a distraction as uh, quite a number of actually researchers agrees that there are these so-called uh, 60,000 thoughts per day that each and every one of us maybe can experience. It, it's actually range from 12,000 to 60,000. Some studies say even 70,000. So this is how many thoughts that we have. And uh, interestingly, the 80% of that thoughts are rather repetitious and also negative in nature. So that is very important for us to take note. Because even some people say, are you sure? Is that the number? Well, I guess, uh, but I can tell you frankly, I personally experienced that whenever I would try to do anything, there will be many thoughts that comes and distract me. And that is the main problem here. So that we want to come out and get things done, the goal, so we better be clear about how we can manage our thoughts and how we can clear our mind so that our focus will be more clearer and we can do things that we want to do with a good result. So this is again another aspect of it, as I said. So by 95% 90, actually of, uh, are just repetitive thoughts eh? and about 80% are negative in nature. So there are four types of thoughts. So one of the most important thoughts that we need to take note is the necessary thoughts. These are related to what we are doing right now, what our intentions are, the goals. So these are the important thoughts that we need to actually dwell into. And usually it can get better if we got what we call a positive thoughts. And the positive thought is usually very powerful, uh, pure in nature, and uh, it will give a good outcome. But unfortunately, there are two other elements of thoughts. One are the negative thoughts that could bring us down. These are emotional in nature, the thoughts that usually 
uh, create the emotions, uh, example, anger, fear, hatred, and also, you know, the uh, ego threatened kind of a situation whereby we hate criticism, we hate negative feedback, so that brings us negative thoughts and negative emotions. And the other things are just a wasteful thoughts, thoughts about the past, thoughts about future that is not in yet, uh, thoughts about anything else that is not really necessary for us to dwell into. So these are the four thoughts that we need to take note. So if we can clear the clutter, obviously we can clear the mind. I mean, if you can really work out what is there in your mind, where you want to focus, so you can see clearer if there is no clutter. But before we can understand all this, I just want to run through with you all some interesting uh, so-called basic that we need to know. So it all comes from the brain to start with. The brain, you got many lobes, you know, from frontal lobe, to uh, the side, the parietal lobe, the back, the occipital lobe, and the uh, temporal lobe. And the top is the parietal lobe. And it is covered by the cranium or the skull. And the lobes is called the cortex at the outside. And inside, uh, they call the brain stem or the primitive brain. And we have cerebellum, we have basal ganglia in the inner side of it. And then it, it, it connects it to the spinal cord. And these are the functions. This is very important for us to take note. Each lobe has their own function. Uh, frontal lobe are decision-making, problem-solving, being conscious, being emotion. So that is under the frontal lobe. Uh, the parietal lobe uh, give you sensation, give you perception, give you spatial and reasoning. Uh, whereby the temporal lobe give you learning, memory, hearing, language, and the occipital lobe give you the vision. And subsequently, when you talk into the inner lobes, uh, inner part of the brain, the hypothalamus talk about the thirst, the hunger, the sleep, and the mood, uh, which also will actually then couple up with the way you reason out things, the way you see things in your frontal lobe. And then you have the thalamus, uh, that is where the sensory relay nucleus. And the brainstem is about the things that the involuntary action, the breathing, the heart rate, the blood pressure and whatnot that it, it governs. Then the cerebellum is about the post, uh, posture, the balance and the coordination. So this is just for the uh, basic understanding. Don't really need to worry so much, but we know that our brain actually have a very uh, big function. And you know that actually we have like billions of uh, cells or dendrites in the brain. So the brain and the nervous system, this is again another way of looking at it. So the, the part of the brain stem, we call it the midbrain, the pons and the medulla. And then we got the posterior, the cerebellum, and then the spinal cord. And most important is also the gland, the hypothalamus, thalamus, hypothalamus, and pituitary gland. And the whole cortex is called the cerebrum. And this is where the right brain and the left brain matters. Where the right brain talks about creativity, inspiration, art, music, and uh, of that nature, talent, yeah, uh, performance and whatnot. While the left brain talks about being analytical, uh, you know, uh, in uh, mathematics, logic, and uh, all those aspects of things, which I would go further into detail in the subsequent slides. So again, if you see the brain area, these are where uh, the focus is, right? If you're talking about the frontal brain part, the frontal lobe talk about attention, about planning, about decision making, the temporal lobe talk about memory, about emotion, and then you got the pro, uh, this, this part of the cortex in the middle talks about movement, uh, and then at the back we got the vision, and then the cerebellum talks about the coordination, the brain stem talks about the heart rate and the breathing, uh, it's just a matter of uh, repetitive, uh, repetition of the previous slide. But this is the most important thing. There is four states of our mind. Uh, either we are in the thinking state, or we are in engaging state, or we are critical in the critical state, or we are in the autopilot state. Most important is that I can tell you uh, we are we are always in the autopilot state. It covers it governs about eighty percent of ourselves, or even ninety percent of the autopilot state, where it is being. Uh, function by the subconscious mind. Uh, when we are conscious only then, we are doing what we call the thinking state. Uh, then we critically assess situation, we analyze things. So the thinking state is a, usually 
10% of our 24 hours is put to, into thinking, but the rest actually it goes into autopilot in nature. Uh, it could be a critical situation. Our thinking can be quite critical in a way. It is good uh, because that is what we want a student to be able to, or people will be able to actually weigh between the good and the bad, uh, knowing how to uh, assess things clearly. So be critical about things not just uh, you know, accept things without actually questioning it. Or we can be what we call engaging, we are doing something. Uh, so these are the four quadrants. It can be either if we are in the thinking state, engaging state, it can be helpful. Uh, in thinking is the internal part of ourselves. Engaging is when we are with other people around us. And it can be harmful if we are critical or autopilot. So uh, both may actually not uh, bring a good effect to us if we are using that state of mind. So again, as I said, the conscious mind is uh, about 10%. Uh, it's about willpower, it's about memory, long-term memory, logical thinking, critical thinking. While the subconscious is the one that actually uh, govern us so much, 90% of our uh, day kind of uh, life and living is in the subconscious mind. Uh, it's all about our belief, about our emotion, about our habits, about the values that we have since young, how we actually come up with the values. Uh, especially since young, we actually, uh, through learning, experiential learning, through what we see, through what we observe, we develop belief, we develop values. And subsequently, we also possibly develop what we call uh, defense mechanism, protective reaction. Uh, subsequently, uh, in the right brain, we have what we call the intuitive intuition, intuitive nature, and also the habits that we have. So the subconscious mind is the one that is very dominant. Uh, if we keep ourselves all the time in the subconscious mind, obviously, we don't really know what we are doing and how things actually happen because it comes from or get direction from the pre-recorded uh, version in the subconscious mind. These are all already recorded earlier, how we end up having this belief, these values, this emotion, and all those uh, long-term memory that keep coming back again and again. And subsequently, we place ourselves into this particular mindset. So this is again another figure where between the two, there is what we call the critical mind. The critical mind will actually decide where we go. We, either we go up into the conscious mind, we become more and more aware of what is going on. So that is actually very important. If we are not aware, we go into what we call a mindless situation. And obviously the subconscious mind is actually 90% of the thinking of the mind kind of a level that we are having uh, most of the time. So we can see all those uh, things that is under the subconscious mind as mentioned earlier. So when you are conscious, you are using logic. So your mind is actually uh, you deal with logic, things around you, where you can think about it, you can actually deduce, and the left brain is actually become more active. Uh, the subconscious mind deal with whatever that comes right in front of you, images and the emotion that we have. And that's how the subconscious mind works on. Uh, so usually, usually uh, what we see in any uh, person, they will put their emotion first rather their thinking cap first. So that's why now we have to reverse by putting the emphasis on conscious mind much more than just letting the subconscious mind take control. So that is very important. So if we can do that, then we can have what we call the mind control and we can actually move on. And this one, the mind control towards the subconscious, that is the bad mind control. But if we can make it conscious, that will become a good mind control, right? So we have to learn to actually exert our uh, thinking uh, rather than just placing our emotion based on what we see, based on what comes in front of us, and we actually just deal with, this is what we call the heart rather than the head. So in, in, in people, we have the head, the heart, and the hand. So when the head is not governing the heart, and the heart is actually coupling up with the emotion, coupling up with the, the ego self, obviously, 
uh, we may actually do things right. We may actually do a lot of things, uh, not knowing that it gives a bad implication. So we need to actually take control of our mind, make it more and more conscious with the uh, situation that we are having. So obviously we know that there's this so-called mind power, right? Your thoughts, you have to actually have a proper thoughts where the thought must be towards a positive uh, outcome, success and accomplishment of things. So how you want to make the most out of it in the conscious mind? We have two levels of conscious. If you want to be a very uh, good conscious state, you must reach what we call a very high conscious state. Uh, where uh, mind whereby we identify the reality and uh, so we can organize our life uh, we can actually learn how to control our mind very well and in our conscious mind obviously it helps us to operate uh, in anything that we are doing uh, because it is mindful this is where mindfulness come about and then if we are in the subconscious mind it just uh, repeatedly uh, once it get recorded it just repeatedly show up in whatever the response that we have. So in this case, example, if it is the subconscious mind, you become a mindless person, uh, it actually will uh, get you to repeatedly doing uh, what you used to do and become in an autopilot minor. Uh, whereby if it is consciously, then you can actually go beyond what you have been doing all this while and you can make a breakthrough, they call it. Uh, you can find a way to actually appreciate the information better. So it's very important for us to actually uh, be more conscious all the time what is going on. As I said, uh, even while driving, uh, we always go back into the subconscious mind, daydreaming, not sure what we are doing. We do see things automatically. We can react to things, for example, while driving. You are safe driving. You know how to use to drive without causing you any trouble. Why, even though you are daydreaming, actually your reaction, the way you respond, are all in the autopilot manner. So actually you still end up uh, reaching the destination uh, quite fairly well without any mishaps and whatnot. So, but it, it is a quite a waste if you did not uh, make it very conscious uh, and you did not achieve a, a better result if it is non-conscious. So here again, if you look at Things that happen that come into our style, uh, it's through observation, the outside to inside kind of energy. Observation are the things that we see right in front of you. There are many things that we actually get uh, information. One is from what people say, what one is what people do, we observe. Uh, then actually, then what uh, we people teach us, uh, what we learn ourselves through experiences and whatnot. So that goes into our mind. Uh, so, but the mind need to have a filter. As I said, quite a number of people who are distressed is because their filter mechanism is quite faulty. They were not able to really perceive things that is proper or improper to accept or not to accept. So they keep accumulating almost everything within themselves, which actually at the end of the day feel burdened as so much was taken in. Uh, but unfortunately, not everything was good in a way. So actually, we need to have a very good filter mechanism, what to be absorbed and what to be left out and not to actually internalize things that is not necessary with us. And then it will end up become what we call the mindset, is the way of being, how we actually want to portray ourselves. And that is based on what the mindset that we have right now. So unfortunately, if the mindset is uh, very negative, obviously, uh, the way of being in ourselves will be uh, rather negative. And that way of being can actually create what we call the life movie maker. So how we behave and how we do things, we can see that it's through the mindset that we have. And also actually it determines how the mood has been managed, how we manage our mood. So unfortunately for some people, when life hasn't been good, for example, during, as I said, the, uh, the way that they have been developed, rather in a very negative manner, obviously the mood will go along with that negativity. If the, uh, it goes up into a positive manner, obviously the making of their life uh, movie uh, uh, and also their mood will be better. So this is again, external event can either be filtered through, uh, either you can delete 
hit immediately or you can actually have a distortion a very wrong under interpretation of thing you distort the uh, the, the message that it become possibly uh, not a good message to you or you may end up generalizing things so we have that tendency to actually distort and generalize uh, we have difficulty actually to throw away this kind of uh, unnecessary thoughts so there are many things that will come up to this situation uh, then at the end of the day it, it reached to what we call memories it reached to what we call values and belief and it's also leading into becoming your attitude and subsequently it become internal representation and it become your actually state of mind and that state of mind determine how the physiology is within yourself then the action comes out based on that so whatever that you get through your internal external event through the observation through what you learn what people tell you what you see so that will become uh, who you are all right so it is actually the phrase uh, saying that uh, it is all in your state of mind right so you can make or break yourself so this is the theory of the mind obviously the conscious mind talk about reasoning talk about logic talk about decision making talk about will power talk about analytical so but that is only covering very small percentage of what has goes on in your mind all the time and there's a there's this so called narrow level of between conscious and the subconscious they call it the critical mind the critical mind is supposed to come up and make you become more and more logical in your way of looking at things so that is very important from the uh, so called the subconscious mind bring it up to the uh, the critical mind so that it become uh, conscious in nature so this is what happened uh, as i said uh, our our mind is like a bubble machine so we have many bubble that pops in through your mind all the time that's how the number come into the so called 60000 thoughts per day so many thoughts come and obviously some thoughts will will get together and become a bigger thoughts so that means from one thought it leads to another thought it leads to another thought and it become more and more complex and then it is very difficult for you to actually undo it uh, so uh, being mindful means you have to actually look at the thoughts but if the thought is not really necessary it is not within your intention it is not within your goal you can just let it come let it go and forget about it so this is the steps if you want to to have a clear thought right always goes back to the purpose your intention because without intention you will not doing things very clearly so if you have intention example as i said i want to actually drive that is my intention drive safely to reach the destination uh, not to get into trouble uh, so intention is always important there and there are certain things that we can focus and give our attention especially if the activity appears to be very serious in nature but there are times when the activity is not that serious we always then end up forgetting our intention or our goal so if ever anything that happens uh, our intention sometimes get a little bit lost in a way bring it back focus the what is the intended purpose this is very important bring back your focus what you really want to do so the intention comes in then you bring in a focus and with the focus actually you did not dwell into any distraction there's no such thing as actually you have to do anything this is very important this phenomena of multitasking is actually even though the tasking is action behavior but it is because of the thought sometimes that make you do many tasks at one time which it actually uh, it it doesn't happen uh, concurrently usually it comes consequentially that means you do one task and then you move on to another task then you go back to the same task to complete it or to continue doing it and then you go back to another task so this cause a lot of distraction this cause actually uh, a lot of time multitasking doesn't give any good effect because people are really uh, not focusing on doing one thing at a time so if ever that thoughts come in if ever that disturbance come in, let it come let it go bring your attention back to the intended purpose of what you want to do and stick to that only intended thought and activity and make it very conscious so these are basically the uh, so called phenomena that is called mindfulness 
So to clear your mind is actually to be mindful about what you are doing. And here it just uh, gives you an idea what mindfulness, mindful is or mindfulness is. So if it is mindfulness, you see things in clarity. If you really intended only to see that, that view that is nice, cool, calm and very nice for you rather than that mindful of so many things that you bring in together and you put them within one's uh, thoughts or within in your mind with many of these thoughts that could cause a lot of distraction. So it's very important to have to understand this word mindful. So your body is currently at present, but if your mind at present, uh, unfortunately, most of us forget about the present. We always like to dwell in the past and sometimes we even look into the future when actually the future will depend on the present. If all your present is proper, if all your present moment is done very well, obviously your future will be well. Because to reach the future, it takes that first step in the present. So every step in the present will lead you to the future. But unfortunately, if you still, your mind is in the past, you won't be able even to move forward your present. Because that's what people say, sometimes you take one step forward, we have a tendency to take two steps backward. So obviously we'll, we'll end up either in the same position later, or in fact, it is worse, you are turning backward. So this is very important uh, because our mind is, is, is the most important thing about how we actually act and feel. So being mindful can be in many aspects. Uh, one of it is, you know, uh, we, we can actually come up with being a balanced person. We can reduce our stress. We can become more and more aware and we can actually do a proper breathing. We do a proper body minding. We mind our body very well. Uh, we are more relaxed. We can do meditation uh, and subsequently mindfulness can lead to uh, actually a person who appreciate life a person who is very cool, calm and collected, a person who actually have very high level of gratitude. Uh, so that is very important uh, to prevent from being stressed because we know how our body uh, actually can deal with that. So if you have any intrusive thought, uh, the word intrusive means it's unwanted, it is involuntary, uh, it could be thought, it could be images, it could be upsetting ideas, right? And uh, sometimes, uh, obviously, it can be very hard to deal with if there is. Uh, that's why we call it intrusive because you don't really want it, but it comes into your mind. So sometimes you were doing something else, but there is intrusive thought that comes in because of the past, uh, something that happens earlier that actually come back while you were trying to do something else, you were in, they were intruded into your mind. Right. Once you identify the thought, allow your brain just to let it come, let it go. Did not dwell on it, did not make any judgment upon it, did not feel bad about it, did not respond to it. Just let it go, allow your brain to move on. Right. This is what we call identify it, accept it, redirect it, right? and then to take it out of the loops that you have. All right. And reassure and rationalize your thought as what they are. Sometimes you just say that, okay, I may need to revisit that thought, but not at this moment, because this moment, my intention is to do this particular thing. And this particular thing is very important at this point of the time. So focus on what is important there and then, rather than trying to bring the past or bring other things that come and disturb what you are trying to do right now. And anyway, it's just thoughts. So sometimes thoughts, you don't really need to really dwell into it seriously. Right. Uh, if you can, obviously, you have to find source of uh, where it is and then get support. Uh, get people to help you out, talk about it. Quite a number of us are quite shy, actually, to express ourselves. I think that is one of the, the problem that most of us did not get out of our problem or our so-called difficult situation because we did not talk it up. It is very important for us to take note that uh, the way we respond to things are sometimes ending up with what we call maladaptive nature, where it does not become properly adaptive to the situation. Mal means it's not proper. So that's why if it is maladaptive, obviously the outcome will be also very bad or not good at all for you. So it is very important to just, again, being mindful about it. The intrusive thought obviously will come in because life 
is, is always full of challenges. There's no way we can actually stop being challenged, eh? our ego self being challenged so much because we want to preserve our ego self. So we don't like threaten uh, nature. We don't like things that actually trying to disturb our ego self, right? So that is where sometimes we feel bad if we don't know how to respond to it. So this is another part. Uh, usually people say uh, breathing is the best way to clear your mind because you know breathing is uh, usually that is the the uh, cheapest, the most available. Uh, each every one of us have because we can always redo our breathing properly. The one that got highly easily tense, the one that got anxious and uh, and so-called all the features of anxiety is because their oxygenation, carbon dioxide flow or exchange is not done properly. And usually if our oxygen, oxygenation is done very well with a good breathing uh, uh, technique, it will go into uh, the blood systems and it will pass into all these uh, uh, peripherals, uh, you know, uh, area of the body into the organs and whatnot. And that actually will relax almost every part of our body. So breathing is the cheapest, breathing is the easiest. The only thing is that we actually take it for granted. We don't really do the breathing work properly. So what we can do to be a mindful, they call it, uh, they call it mindful meditation. It's, it's, yeah, it is a form of meditation where you quietly actually create a time for it. Uh, you find the time and the space, obviously find a place where uh, no disturbance as much and then you can set a time example you want 10 minutes of your time to be of that uh, feeling uh, you know the meditation part where cool calm and not no disturbance and you find a comfortable uh, place a comfortable position you, you check your postures you check everything around you that does not cause any form of distraction so then you do actually you take uh, your your breathing exercise and the most important is what we call the slow, easy, deep, diaphragmatic breathing, where you inhale through your nose slowly as much as you can, trying to bring it as far in as you can through the inhalation. And you can actually pull in through using your nose much better because breathing through your mouth, in inhale through the mouth, is quite difficult to get so far in. But using the nose, you can get it quite in very well. And then when it is in, obviously that's where they call it the diaphragmatic breathing. The diaphragm will push down. And to know how, how much the diaphragm pull can be pushed down is when you see that the abdomen bobs up. That means the pressure from the diaphragm coming down will push your abdomen uh, surface to be actually uh, bellied up uh, like a balloon. Uh, that is indicating it is this slow, deep, easy, uh, diaphragmatic breathing. Slow means actually a, a very good breathing, uh, deep, slow breathing is only like eight breaths per minute. That means you can do it slow and steady. Uh, usually our normal breath is about uh, 15, 16, uh, maybe the most we will allow is until about 20 breaths per minute. And beyond that, it is already uh, hyperventilation. So, but then it's usually is a, a very short breath that will be upper chest breath. And that doesn't bring good uh, so-called exchange of gases at the basis. Our target is to actually achieve a good exchange of gases, our oxygen and, and carbon dioxide uh, at the basis of the lung so that then things can go in uh, into the system. The oxygen can actually be distributed very well. Then you redirect uh, your attention to your breath. That this way, be mindful about the breathing. So basically mindfulness can occur in everything that you want to do. Breathing, eating, walking, even talking. Be mindful of all those things because uh, if you're mindful, you won't do a lot of so-called mistakes. You don't do a lot of unnecessary maladaptive action that uh, actually bring uh, the opposite uh, outcome that you intended. Then subsequently repeat again, uh, maintain the attention to your breath, uh, repeat again doing it. Uh, so usually I will actually advise you to try to do it uh, quite frequently in a day. Just take about 
two, three minutes to do to start with, then you can increase to five minutes, you can increase to 10 minutes, but make it uh, as frequent as possible so that you become uh, more used to it. Uh, because always remember behavior based uh, kind of uh, management needs to really do and become a habit. Uh, so habits needs reputation. So that is what we need to do. And so uh, again, uh, if ever things are not doing very well, just be kind to yourself. Don't blame yourself for not able to do it. Don't feel guilty that you are not able to achieve you what you think you should. Don't actually uh, feeling uh, give a lot of negative comment on yourself. Just, just, just be kind to yourself. Accept uh, things uh, the way it is slowly and uh, try to develop more and more uh, better with whatever that you are trying to do. Example like this exercise. Sometimes people are you know uh, unhappy because they did not achieve their target. So, but, but that is not really uh, necessary because you just bring a negative uh, energy within yourself, right? And then obviously after that, you can come out of it. So they call it prepare, the soft landing. Uh, when, the, when the time is off, you don't really immediately rush out. You take your time uh, just, just to, uh, how should I say, get back into your normal self. In any situation, if you do mindfulness, if you do hypnosis, there's always a time whereby we actually bring it back. Even exercise also, there will be time where actually you can, you have to get back to your normal self after doing all this. So this is uh, how you can clear your mind too. There are many other ways of coping. Example, one of it is uh, meeting a friend, talking to a friend, or just uh, go into solitude, embrace silence, do meditation, uh, just uh, do reflection. Uh, and do exercise, don't procrastinate. Oh, some people say, yeah, take a nap. Uh, but obviously, uh, always remember, these are coping temporarily. If the underlying is the issue, the underlying issue must be sorted out. Always remember this. Sometimes we forgot about what is the cause and what is the outcome or the consequence. Sometimes we try to actually just deal with the consequence, but the underlying is still there. If the underlying is still there, actually, we are not really dealing with it rightly. So this is very important. And to go into that cause, a lot of people didn't realize that sometimes we treat symptom, but we did not treat the cause. And the cause is more important than the symptom. Uh, example, like if you treat symptomatically, it goes off for a while, but the symptom will come back again because the underlying issues is still there. So this is an uh, important phenomena where most of us did not realize which is the cause, which is the outcome or the complication. Uh, so if we just trim the complication, the cause will always bring it back. So if you change your mind, obviously you can change your life. So since you are a person who can easily be anxious or a person who can really uh, uh, end up with, you know, feeling tension, feeling anxiety, uh, depression and subsequently doing all those bad behaviors. Unfortunately, quite a number of youngsters nowadays, I've seen quite a number of my medical students are uh, actually getting into what we call deliberate self-harm. They cut themselves at the arm, the forearms, uh, just saying that they want to feel the pain. But that is not possibly, that is what we call the maladaptive behavior. So be careful about that. We don't want to be into the situation whereby it doesn't bring good to us. It in fact, uh, further complicates matter. So your mind is a garden. Your thoughts are the seeds. So if you put a proper seed, you grow a flower. But if you actually have a bad seed, obviously you grow weeds. So until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life. And then you call it a fate. Actually, even though it has been fated for you, you can modify the fate in some aspects of our life and living. Okay, so that is about uh, uh, what I think, uh, how we can clear our mind. So obviously it is a bubble machine. The mind is very active. Many things will come in and I can tell you it is always a battle that sometimes we lost the battle uh, or most of the time we lost the battle but you're getting more and more conscious about it. If you're getting more and more mindful about it, you can start winning the battle because the answers to that problem is again like what Carl Jung said, 
make the unconscious conscious go into the conscious mind more rather than the subconscious mind don't ever let the subconscious mind the pre-recorded programming take over your life go into the conscious state and that is very important for how you want to deal with the problem so with that i think i would end the slide presentation uh, i hope we can actually discuss further uh, if there's any question, we can try to answer the question and I hope everyone else also can actually contribute uh, their own experience, their own way of looking at things, because this is just a prompt for us to open our mind. Thank you so much for your attention. Felicia, uh, so I'll give it back Thanks, to Prof. you. Uh, you can stop sharing the screen so yes, we I can go back to... Okay. All yeah, right. The that is some good uh, sharing, Prof. Thank you so much. Uh, so yeah, so we are also on Facebook Live. So today we are discussing about uh, how to have a clear mind, right? Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, one of the things I think, uh, of course, yeah, you know, we've been talking since uh, we've been, I think, about five to six topics already now. Five to yeah, six. Yeah, yeah. and uh, and we have uh, spoken about holistic wellness, uh, parenting, uh, how uh, how to choose. Uh, friends, life partners, uh, we spoke about mental health, uh, we have uh, Mr. Tawa uh, who spoke about his uh, you know, NLP uh, you know, uh, uh, practice and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, so I think this, uh, this is one of the very good um, topics because we are definitely still in a pandemic. I think cases are increasing, although sometimes it's not in our area, but I think today's, um, today, like today's uh, cases, uh, it's actually quite spread out in all over the states actually. Mm. So, you know, we can't deny the fact that it's still there. And uh, those are one of the things that added on into the stress and whether, you know, economy is going to go, uh, you know, how the economy is going to go starting next month. And uh, there's so many things, you know, we, we are no longer living that uh, normal. We have, the new normal is the, the normal right now. So, uh, you know, that, that, it, that, that people face uh, stress at different uh, different levels in in, in, in all these uh, past six months i think you know so uh to have to declutter or have a clear mind i think it's very important to know how to first i think first of all we have to be like uh we have to embrace those feelings i think one of the things why we don't like you say go back to the source of it rather than just you know do something temporarily to relieve it I think most of us, uh, it's easier to not acknowledge the facts because women, maybe we are more like, I think Dato will agree with me, women are more nurturing, we are more in tune to our emotional side and, uh, you know, or ignoring us also in the house. So, uh, and for the men's men, maybe perhaps it's also hard to, uh, you have to be the strong, you expect to be the strong one. So you are, you know, in that sense, lack of, uh, you know, to express emotional, uh, the emotional part of it. So there is a difference between men and women. So women can get a bit too emotional. When we become emotional, we become too emotional. So I think it's okay to express, to embrace that feelings and uh, to talk about it, to journal it, uh, to, to first understand that it is, uh, it is valid. Those feelings are valid. And okay. then we can get down to, you know, the source and how to overcome it or how to let it pass. Because I think emotion is something like, like you say, 60,000 uh, thoughts. And most of it are old thoughts that keep on, you know, it could be uh, fear, it could be regrets, it could be so many things, right? So at the end of the day, it's all about uh, self-care and self-love, how we do every day. It's like breathing. Uh, you cannot just say breathe today and don't breathe tomorrow or breathe the next four minutes, right? You have to continue breathing. Uh, so to sort of practice, continue practicing uh, that mindfulness is very important. Uh, journal it down, meditate. I think I find for me, uh, I can speak about how exercise uh, helps me. Like when you say uh, just now, like, oh, uh, how can uh, someone like me be, uh, can be so motivated to do my exercise or in fitness or in wellness? So one of the things I, for me, I, I'm more enlightened in that sense, early, uh, exposed to it early on that exercise can help me overcome uh, certain challenges. Uh, like if I want to go, I mean, as young people, you can either do two things. Either you can move around because you're still young or you can use 
uh, food or you can use uh, substances like alcohol or drugs or you know self-hurting you know so those are the things that we we turn to when we are facing troubles because that, that is how we express ourselves we can either be a bit more destructive or uh, you know sometimes the positive one can also be overdoing it so sometimes we can get into injury as well so it's very important like i said to listen to your body uh, but using exercise is one of the healthiest way uh, and balanced way because you, when you sweat it out when you uh, when you are increasing your heart rate uh, when you're moving your muscles you are you are actually your body releases something called uh, endorphins right and yeah. uh, that, that that is actually a happy hormone so mm. uh, it may make you feel relief temporarily but it's good but you still need to go back and work on yourself but okay. it, at least it helps you from overthinking things and you know it disturbs your sleep and uh, and so many other uh, bad things that you want to probably do to yourself uh, but at least it helps you to clear your mind so that you are on the right path to do on the right things. So you, you can't go very wrong when you start to eat a little bit healthier, uh, make some healthier choices, uh, you know, move a little bit more, take some you know, deep breath, journal things down, take it one step at a time. Uh, I think uh, those are the you know, practical tips that one person can do. But when it goes a little bit deeper, like you said, like just now, like, uh, you know, people going to self-hurt, things that they do, may, may, it may not hurt them now, but in the long term, it may actually be quite destructive. So uh, uh, what is the first step they can do? Because sometimes to reach out to a person, uh, sometimes to reach out to even parents or friends, uh, it could be difficult because not all environments supports that. Uh, emotional or can sort of like absorb that they may have they, they may actually be uh, passing on their own judgment or their own uh, you know because they are yeah. you know they are they're close to you right so you wouldn't want to share this part of your sort of you you hide this part of yourself mm. and how does one person uh, you know find out who can they talk to I mean uh, yeah given your given your feel maybe this is something that you can help them out somebody who's listening out there uh, thinking that they're very distressed or they don't know how to vent their feelings out. They cannot find a person mm. that they know or like or trust. So how do you, uh, how will you advise that? Okay, I think uh, there are a few things that we need to take note now. Uh, first and foremost is uh, where uh, position that we are at with regard to our so-called uh, the mind level that we have. Uh, here we can also talk about actually uh, between the it, the ego self, and the ego ideal that each a person are supposed to have, because that interpretation is very important. Uh, sometimes we still actually feel so threatened because we thought ourselves has been succumbed into kind of a threatening situation. People commenting on us, and since we want to preserve our ego self, we may react. Example, if people appear to be offensive, we then become defensive. If people appear to be pushing you, you may want to push back, and which is sometimes doesn't bring good effect. Uh, that's why uh, some of these so-called deliberate self-harm or hurting self is because the way they respond to it of that nature. And this issue is because they were actually responding using their emotion more Rather, they will actually stop, think, only then decide what I should do. Because a lot of times, when, when you are lost in a way, you tend to react first. Any action, you will always react first. But a good, uh, clear-minded person will actually, and that's why mindfulness will actually lead you into what we call you have a time to stop and ponder about it before you end up. So I think the issue is about the self. How strong are we? Uh, how much have we got? And if we know the self, and what are the good ego self, and what are actually the bad ego self that we have. Example like uh, the so-called immediate gratification in ego self. There are many times we believe that we must always be gratified. We must always get what we want we must be achieving like other people achieving. So if we don't, we feel bad about it. And because of that, it, we bring it inside, we internalize it, we hurt ourselves so much. So that element of understanding our ego self, our gratification needs, our so-called, you know, uh, who we are, how much we have, what 
need to be improved until unless you are a self smart person or what we call the interpersonal intelligent person under the emotional intelligent group then i think it actually can make a lot of difference so that's why each and every one of us must actually learn how to develop our strong emotional intelligence rather than what we have all this while what we call intellectual intelligence only without actually realizing who we are and how we behave and then how we interact with our environment and with the people around us so with regard to of this nature i would say first and foremost the individual themselves must come forward and that's why never stop looking for actually assistance uh never should believe that you know when you were saying ladies may be more emotional than guys it's not that most of us because of ego self we thought that we are weak we thought that we cannot be shame we thought that we we must be perfect we thought that we should be knowing the answers to everything mm. i can tell you none of us actually are perfect none of us knows and answers to everything none of us have experienced enough actually to be better in all the ways that we thought we supposed to be because all of us are still learning so mm. i think if we have that kind of a mindset if we have that kind of an understanding then actually we are always become what we call students in our life and at the end of the day with being a student you can also become actually a teacher to another person who subsequently after you learn that part of it you can then propagate to the others So I think it's about the ego self, and while you develop ego self, most important is try to develop what we call ego ideal. Your conscience must be very clear. So because until unless we graduated into what we call ego ideal, where the conscience is there, the conscience talk about what is right, what is wrong, what should, what should not, what I have, what I don't have. The most important is ego conscience, ego ideal. Know who you are, but being ego self, you always think that you can easily be threatened that's why you end up doing maladaptive defense mechanism maladaptive coping style uh, because of this situation whereby you easily become threatened and that's when you end up easily become stressed and distressed but if a person is very clear about this actually nothing is touchable they they don't feel anything bad about it because they know what is really going on they are actually coming term to term actually how they react to the situation mm. and all That's this good. actually need to to learn need to to share Try and error to, and then you learning by life experience but if if you do just alone you may not see the right uh, you may not actually learn a better thing mm. because you just do it alone you you don't have much scope to look at yeah That's you must you, join the right platform mm. i think mm. yes yes That's why don't don't uh, about being a negative person don't group with negative person lah <laughs> move on to another group yeah it's important I, to I, I, walk away uh when uh you know that it doesn't serve you uh, or it doesn't not to say that it doesn't um uh sort of give you any benefits but hmm. if you know that it, the uh you know people or the environment uh that you mix with is um not to say to the point that it's toxic but if it's not uh going to make you a better person or make mm. yeah make you a better person and um, be a better person around those people i think yeah it's it's good to minimize the interaction because it yeah. it does more harm than good mm. you can still be friend but yeah, uh, it's, it's not necessary to be a very close friend always mm. remember that i always remember this uh you can't expect anything from the person that actually you can't even rely to expect one Uh, so if you know that already yet and usually this telltale sign has been shown uh, they don't keep up to their promise they don't do things the way they were saying they want to or you were hoping that they uh, so that's why the problem is ego self sometimes the problem is it makes you want to depend on someone so much mm. always remember that there is stages here you be independent when you are reaching your adulthood but always remember obviously you have to have codependent you have to interdependent with other people around you you can't avoid that but mm. don't ever subject yourself all the time all the life into what we call being a dependent person on someone else you have to mm. live your own life you have to be mm. strong with yourself that's why to develop from ego from it to ego self ego self to ego ideal you must graduate at every level 
Mm. You must at the end of the day, by the time we reach that 30, 40, 50, 60, 60 social Ericsson stages, you become very generative. You become, you know, feeling achieved in the later years. I think that is very important. Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks, Prof. Prof. Uh, common question, Prof. Yeah. Prof, coming to that uh, uh, stage, uh, when you move from ego self to ego ideal, mm -hmm. which is uh, 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 such an important stage, yeah. is there any any short training, short courses that you can conduct yeah. to help people to address this issue? Yeah. Because uh, there are too many, including I, I sometimes also I fall into a lot of these kind of traps, actually. Mm -hmm. So after knowing that the mindful breathing or this and that mindfulness, uh, mm -hmm. so we begin to know how to ventilate quite a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but then those things co keep cropping up. I can see that even we do mindful breathing and mindful mi mindfulness practice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we also find that so big, so much of things coming up every minute. Yes. So yes. there are a lot of people who have given up this skill, they even worse. Yeah. So I think it's essentially important that uh, we can. Uh, Uh, come up with some uh, so-called uh, uh, some apps huh? or some some questions where people can go through to do a, 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 a assessment whether how much of damage they have got there or how much of uh, uh, so-called uh, dysfunction yeah. so that they can uh, they can realize that they need to to seek uh, so-called uh, counseling or or further therapy you see sure. so I think that only will become a solution to the problem what do you think yeah Actually, actually, uh, why we are having this so-called forum or this so-called sharing, uh, I think we need to, uh, our fit unit enterprise, we need to be the center of uh, uh, getting people to get in to actually experience the right thing, what they can do. Because I think all of us here are resourceful enough. All of us who are actually here, for example, that Tonorain, Shakir, Murti, even Nurin, as a, even as a student, Nurin, you actually mm -hmm. have some resources that you can actually get us to understand, uh, exactly. Francis and whatnot. So I, I guess we can be, what, that's why I, I believe we can be a change agent, an agent of change to make a difference to people who really need it. So, but these yeah. people need a place to always come for face-to-face -face kind of a situation whereby yeah. we can actually uh, share and uh, then Uh, show them the way how to be better. Uh, yeah. If it is one way, uh, is is particular uh, cross-sectional cause, yeah, it does help. It gives awareness. But always mm -hmm. remember, any situation whereby it come up with behavior, it come up with action, need to be actually uh, more prolonged, more doing, more kind of, uh, how can yeah. I say? It cannot be a one cross-sectional sitting. Yeah. So I think this is very important. Uh, yeah, I think. It, I, think yeah. uh, I just want to add. You'll be yeah. surprised. Actually, you have taught your your child to develop ego ideal as young as three year old. Wow! Actually, you already teach your child conscience at that age. You Seriously. remember when the child have another sibling? Yeah. Actually, start yeah. when, they, when the gap is near too near. Mm. Yeah, you already actually train your child to actually be caring, to actually be considerate. Mm. This is all conscience. This is all knowing yeah. what is right, what is wrong, what is good, what is bad, what should, what should not. You mm. already teach them. But unfortunately, this, this teaching or this learning when stop short after the child is out in the school and it doesn't work that way. Example, like if you see in some school like Japan maybe, uh, they ask this child to be a very responsible person, uh, not only academically, but socially doing many things. What I'm trying to say is that that is where you keep developing them to always maintain conscience, high conscience level. And that's how people become very compassionate, become very helpful, can do many things with other people around. I mean, some you see some kids, sometimes they, they have their lunch box, but they don't really eat their lunch. They share with a friend or they give yeah. them. So that yeah. is a function level. That is actually mm -hmm. ideal. It doesn't interest themselves alone. E ego self, number one important is diri, self. Ego ideal, number one important is people. So that's how actually, this is where emotional mm -hmm. intelligence come in. Self smart, people smart. 
know how to match them together. So I think, I think again, these are all knowledge uh, that we need to be aware of to start with, and then how to put into practice. Uh, this is the nature. And for yeah. parents, obviously, uh, actually right now, if you know the uh, Kementerian Pendidikan Malaysia, uh, so-called strategy is to, one of the goal is to, they call it Kemenjadian Pelajar. The student hmm. must be well developed. Kemenjadian, yeah. they call it. One of the goal is kemenjadian murid. Kemenjadian. Yeah. So the word menjadi means become something, become someone. Yeah. But they yeah. forgot to achieve yeah. kemenjadian pelajar. They must actually have kemenjadian guru. Yeah. Without the guru menjadi, how the pelajar <laughs> boleh jadi? Serious. And then they forgot without the guru to menjadi. The pemimpin in the school must menjadi first. Yeah. And this must go consequently together, concurrently. So yeah. if the guru is tak menjadi because the pemimpin in the school tak menjadi, how do you expect the pelajar menjadi? <laughs> and then they also <laughs> need to actually understand that yeah. the guru, the school, and the parent must also be menjadi. Only the yeah. child who is actually still raw become a better yeah. child to become a better person. Yeah. And then obviously the government has their role and they, they supply yeah. every resources. If everything possible, right? Based on whatever yeah. that we collect taxes and whatnot, you have to give because this is the most important thing. The nation will make or break because yeah. the citizen is the one who actually get them to make or break. As I said, mm -hmm. you yeah. individually make or break yourself. If each and every one put together and each and every one are faulty in nature, obviously at the end of the day, it's like an analogy whereby a single brick, if it is a faulty brick, you put them all together, become a building. How long does a building last to stand? Obviously, yeah. it won't be long. Exactly. It is a weak brick. Mm -hmm. But if the bricks are all good, strong enough, when we put them together to become a community, a community become a nation, Obviously, the nation will become so strong. Exactly. So this, this idea so is important. all connected. It's all interrelated. Yep. So there is no so, such thing yeah. that, okay, I want you to be menjadi, but I don't do my part. Uh, this is where the problem mm -hmm. is. So the parent must be menjadi, the guru must be menjadi, the, uh, the environment must be menjadi, supporting it. And then, you know, people all must actually interplay. So it's not the equation will be break. People do what you do anyway, so yeah, yeah. do what you say. Okay, great. Thanks, Prof. Thanks, uh, Coach Francis. Yeah. Anybody with any last question? Because we are about one hour in. So uh, anybody with any question, Dato? Noreen, Dr. Shaker, and then Murti? You can unmute yourself, Dato. <laughs> I just want to make comment in today's life. Our mind is so cluttered and busy with the information technology. In fact, it become a very bad habit. As soon as we wake up, we look at WhatsApp, we look at the email, we look at Instagram, we look at Facebook and Twitter. Which mind is so busy, uh, Prof until so much so we are not creative anymore because there's no space there to be creative okay. and our frontal lobe and the hypothalamus is not connected because it's so cluttered and busy what's yes. your comment uh, <laughs> this habit become uh, not only the young generation especially yes, so yes, busy. Yes. It, this is what we call uh, fats and fashion trends and uh, whatnot uh, which actually comes and goes don't worry uh, it will actually move on to another trends and facts and patient. But the only problem is that now, again, the choice is based on the individual. What do you really want? Do you want to follow what is going on with people around you? Or do you have your own stand? Are you clear what is your motive? What is your purpose? Example, like Felicia was talking about, I have a sense of purpose. I have a sense of what I want to be, what I want to achieve how I want to get this thing done. So until, unless you make that sense as a passion, unfortunately, these people are all very passionate about doing it. They are doing the wrong thing. So they're also passionate. 
Actually, all of us have that tendency or that characteristic which is strong. But usually we do it on the wrong path. We go to the strong negatively, but not the strong positively. In it indicates that actually we have it. Our fitra, our nature have it. The only thing is we don't use it properly. So this this kind of a thing, all of us can play games in the video. All of us can look into what uh, what something. All of us can make our self gratification by seeing our likes and our number of likes and our number, the response that we see. We feel good about it. There's nothing wrong with that. But is that the only thing you have in your life? So you have to ask that question. That's why reflection is very important. So if they believe that they have not moved forward, they still stay within the same place again and again and again, uh, that means they are not progressing. If you feel that you are not progressing, then I think you better do something about it. The example, like even like for me, uh, my, my experience in life is as simple as this. Am I happy if actually my increment for a year as a specialist is only 120 ringgit per year, which is actually, if I were to divide into month, is only 10 ringgit per month. And I'm a specialist. That means my, that my movement in terms of economy is only like 10 ringgit per month for the whole year because the next year my KPI will, get, will become a very horizontal KPI. And that is what I get. That shows that I am in a comfort zone. That shows that I don't challenge myself to be better. That shows that this is what we call, last time we had this so-called term, the dead graduate. A graduate who already finish aja, tak payah buat apa-apa lagi. Tunggu sampai pencin. Doesn't move, doesn't forward, doesn't know what they are doing. So that is the issue. And we have a lot of these dead graduates. We ourselves has been there before. Until we start, then we realize. Then we move forward. I think the issues about kids is that somehow this is where the forum needs to be there. We talk to them, we open their eyes. Uh, we actually give them some idea. They can, they can receive, they can actually turn you down. But again, I said, we can't help those who doesn't want to help themselves, but we can really help if they really want our help. Because we are very resourceful. We know about this. Uh, especially our own children, it's more difficult. That's why sometimes with our own children, we cannot deal with them. We get other person to deal for us. Because I, I can never change my own children. Because I'm quite emotional about it. So even as a psychiatrist, you'll be surprised. I can't change anyone that is so close to me. That's why in medical, we, we say that doctor don't treat family. Because one doctor, three family, habis. Semua tak jalan. Yeah. Very difficult. Uh, one more thing I want to say that I have an experience uh, working, multitasking, doing things, many things at one time. And I always feel that time is not enough for me. But I think it is not good, definitely, because it gives you a mental fatigue. No. And you are switching from one area to the other area. And in between, there's a lapse uh, in doing things. So that is not good. And you cannot be so creative because your mind is so tight. So I think the performance is not as good and effective. So I think it's better to do one task at a time. Yeah, one time and complete it. Okay. What, what I, uh, this is a new term I can tell you that is actually, uh, you can use it. We call it attention deficit hyperkinetic adult. We have a lot of attention deficit. We do many things trying to do many things mm. and actively doing many things. That's mm. why we become attention deficit active adult. So actually, uh, not only ADHD in young kids nowadays, all of us have been asked to do so many things at one time. Mm. Mm. That, that end up with actually not... Com actually, a lot of research has already shown uh, multitasking actually brings down productivity. Multitasking causes a lot of actually uh, so-called stress and strain. Uh, multitasking actually create what we call the situation of actually bullying, yeah? using your subordinate to complete your job sometimes. So there is a tendency of this kind of a thing all happens. Uh, basically, the, the, that time, it is not actually multitasking. It is doing one thing at a time. But unfortunately, we don't complete it. We move on to the next one. Then we have to finish the other one. Then we move on to the next one. 
So it is not really, we cannot do two things together actually. Uh, it's not easy to do two things together, especially if the tasks are major enough. I mean, we can do something basic, like example, while driving, I can pick up the cup and drink the water. So that is a simple multitasking that should not be a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's prioritizing, I think, uh, what is yeah, important. Prioritizing. Sure. Then uh, being mindful. But I think, you know, when Dato say, you know, it's a lot of like, you know, when you wake up in the morning, I think you see all these 10 different uh, social media things. First, you grab your phone. So I think um, I even like this month, I actually try, um, switch off for like three days. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. from my Facebook, from my Instagram, you know, uh, just to just to give it a try, you know, but because, you know, uh, and then I realized that work actually, it, it, it is a good break uh, because you still want to check it out, although I lock, lock out of everything, uh, but you still want to check it because it's, it's out of habit, right? Uh, I feel that it's good, uh, but at the end of the day, when I'm back on it, it's also about just prioritizing what are the things I need to do on the social media. Like mm. if my work requires me to be on social media, to show up, mm. to be at, to have an education platform and things like that, I do have to do those postings, uh, but not linger around, not being like at least being mindful about it. And then sometimes it's good to just leave the phone. And uh, if let's say you have to answer to certain people, like for example, uh, customer urgent messages or whatever, uh, I think it's good to put up a timing so that people know that you are not controlled by, I want to respond now, right? So it, it's okay if you respect other people's time, people respect your time. Um, I don't think, I mean, unless somebody's house is on fire, I think that's emergency, right? That's urgent and important. So uh, not, not an, an issue uh, of like... Um, whether I'll, I'll, we can do multitasking or whatever. But one of the things I realized uh, is that what we can do is that when we're eating, uh, let's say, right, do one thing at a time, uh, try not to listen to music, try not to look at your phone while eating. So for like a, person, a single person like me, sometimes at one, uh, when I'm eating, I can be looking at my phone, I can be listening to music, I can be chatting, I can be talking, right? So it's no. actually not good. So what I do is that when I eat, I give myself that me time, like, okay, one hour, uh, it could be half an hour to one hour or even two hours of just me time sitting there enjoying the food. So sometimes when we coach people, like why people just put food into their body without them knowing because they're not yeah. mindful while they're listening to music, they're doing 10 different things, you know, while eating, they don't even chew properly, right? So uh, things like that. So it's good. You, you, can know, even, the, mm -hmm. you can even get the bone stuck into your throat. Yeah, exactly. So just do one thing <laughs> at a time. A yeah, How train you? yourself to be mindful, prioritize. I think uh, uh, mm. when, I, when I'm when i starting to do my meditation, I wake up at the first thing in the morning, I try to write my affirmations and uh, mm. meditate the first one hour. So if let's say you get busy, you know, during that time, everybody will be bothering you, asking you 10 million different things, you know. Uh, that's hence why they, you know, like Robin Sharma, he put up like a 5 a.m. club, you know. So that one, the first hour is for you to do your own thing, right? Uh, I, I think that's good. Uh, you know, it's not easy to always wake up at 5 a.m., I feel, for me at least. But it is a good habit to have uh, if you have to be uh, having discipline over uh, having a bit of willpower and discipline, so be it, you know, we have to do something because we cannot move on. So if we feel burnout or we feel that we know that we are not on the right track anymore, it's good to just uh, do one thing at a time and then refocus. And then when things go back to normal, then we know that, oh, okay, it's okay to uh, have a me time. It's okay to do some community work. It's okay to hang out with friends. It's okay to uh, have un unfinished work Every day we have unfinished work. Just be kind to yourself and not beat yourself over it. So you know, so not so much of anxiety and you know all these things. So one thing at a time. Yeah, I think that's. Important. I guess I guess the, the the phrase of actually, if you plan your life, you plan your day. I think only then it will become better for you. Uh, so you must have goals every day actually. Without a goal, obviously you don't know what you are doing. You just do things according to that comes in front of you. So I think a person without any goal, obviously, you become, uh, you know, uh, they go what we call, they don't know where the destination will be. Uh, I think that is the issue. Uh, the other thing is with regard to, I believe, as you said, uh, I think, how can we make things passionate? Only when you are passionate, you'll be surprised you go the extra mile to achieve what you want to achieve. But if you are not passionate, there's always half-heartedness. And that's where things doesn't go accordingly. I think. So make things that you are passionate about, uh, exercise-wise, jaga, mm -hmm. kesihatan-wise, 
uh, jaga your life, uh, jaga to you know uh, whatever that is. because a lot of times it can be an asset or it can be a liability. So we have to choose which side is it. Like you said, you want to see the phone, you can see the phone, but you can use it for a set nature rather than liability in nature. If the phone doesn't bring good, it is liability. If the phone bring good, you contact, you got to you know reach out, you got respond out of it, and at the end of the day, you got possibly monetary gain. You feel self satisfied. These are assets that you can use. You can use it. It doesn't mean you cannot check your phone. You can. The only thing is, if you don't get any production out of it, why should you go and dwell into that? So that is the issue. Yeah. Great. Okay. So that's a good session for today. Thank you, everybody. Wow. Hello, Shakir. Yeah, Dr. Thank Shakir you. is in the house. Bye -bye. Everybody said we have their camera on, so that's nice. Yes, 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 so yes. yeah, so this this uh, video will also be on uh, YouTube uh, later yes, on. Yes. And I hope, uh, I hope we are uh, getting people to listen and things like that. Yeah. yeah, I feel that you know there's a lot of unseen audience, and even from our little conversation, even if affect one person. You know, uh, of our daily conversation with other people, I think that there's seven of us here, right? Mm. So seven. If let's say you, uh, everybody has a family of three or four or friends, three or four people. You, we affect twenty, thirty, forty people, and then it it, it moves on. So, uh, we become first a better person. We jadi dulu lah, you know. Then only we yeah. help other people to jadi. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. So, so the equation so need to be fulfilled every step way. Yeah, I think every everybody has to has to work on themselves, you know, be the change you want to see in the world. I think everybody here has a purpose why they're on this call, you know, every Saturday night, right? So yeah, if you show yeah. up, maybe we, it's, uh, there's a message for you, right? Yeah. And uh, and yeah, for the people who's watching, uh, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we hope to uh, continue to uh, have a more well-informed uh, community and then uh, moving forward, be more productive, stay safe. Uh, you know, still keep your physical distancing, wear your mask, wash your hands, eat healthy, exercise, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I uh, said everything already. Okay. So, okay. Uh, so, all right. So, thank you so much, uh, Prof. Okay. And, uh, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.